Tonight, President Trump's private business, his presidential campaign, his transition team, his White House, and now his inaugural committee, all to varying degrees under criminal investigation. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that federal prosecutors are investigating the Trump inaugural committee, an investigation that partly arises out of materials seized by the FBI in its raids of Michael Cohen's home, office, and hotel room. Quote, Federal Bureau of Investigation agents obtained a recorded conversation between Mr. Cohen and Stephanie Winston Wolkoff, a former advisor to Melania Trump, who worked on the inaugural events. In the recording, Ms. Wolkoff expressed concern about how the inaugural committee was spending money, according to a person familiar with the Cohen administration uh, investigation. Now, people familiar with the matter tell the Wall Street Journal that the criminal probe is looking into whether the committee misspent some of the $107 million it raised and, quote, whether some of the committee's top donors gave money in exchange for access to the incoming Trump administration, policy concessions, or to influence official administration positions. The Journal also reports investigators have spoken to this man, Rick Gates, about inaugural, the inaugural committee spending. Gates previously served as the deputy Trump campaign manager and deputy chairman of Trump's inaugural committee. He's currently cooperating with federal prosecutors as part of his plea deal. The report of an investigation into Trump's inaugural committee comes as NBC News confirms Donald Trump was the third person in the room in August of 2015, who was talking about hush money payments to women with Michael Cohen and National Enquirer publisher David Pecker, the guy on the right. Remember, Trump keeps saying he had no knowledge of this. It wasn't illegal. It didn't even happen. Federal prosecutors in New York said in a press release yesterday that American media, that's the parent of the National Enquirer, admitted to making a $150,000 payment, quote, in concert with the campaign and that there was a meeting between Cohen, Pecker, and, quote, at least one other member of the campaign. The news tonight, that other person, the third person in the room, Donald J. Trump himself. These new reports dropped just hours after the president's increasingly desperate attempts to distance himself from Michael Cohen and his former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, attempts that are often contradictory and obviously false. Take Cohen. This morning, Trump said Michael Cohen should have known better than to break campaign finance laws because Cohen is a lawyer. But hours later, Trump tried to claim that Cohen was actually just a PR flack. First of all, that was his all, title. He did of very low-level work. Why did he you did need more him? public relations than he did law? But he did stuff. You'd see him on television. He was okay on television. In a matter of hours, Trump picked his own argument apart. Then the president falsely claimed that Michael Flynn did not lie to the FBI. He did. And that prosecutors recommended Flynn not serve any jail time because, quote, they're embarrassed. They're not. Look. What's going on right now with General Flynn? The FBI said he didn't lie. I saw your tweet on that about But this Mueller morning. said he did lie. So they took a man who's a general and a respected person and a nice man and I don't even know what he said about me because, you know, maybe they, they scared him enough that he'll make up a story. But I have a, a feeling that maybe he didn't. He's a tougher kind of a guy than Cohn. But they took a general that they said didn't lie and they convinced him he did lie and he made some kind of a deal. And now they're recommending no time. You know why? Because they're embarrassed that they got caught. They said he didn't lie. They're embarrassed. Who's they? For the record, which is in front of you, Michael Flynn said in federal court that he entered into his guilty plea voluntarily and he entered a plea of guilty because he is guilty and for no other reason. They, they said he didn't lie. There's no they. It's no surprise that this week of stunning developments has the president on edge. NBC News reporting Trump, quote, has told people close to him in recent days he's alarmed by the prospect of impeachment according to multiple sources, end quote. Joining us now, Joyce Vance, former federal prosecutor, MSNBC legal contributor, and Harry Littman, former federal prosecutor and deputy assistant attorney general under President Clinton. Welcome to both of you. Thank you for being here. Joyce, help me make sense of Donald Trump's crazy interview with Fox in which he's just sort of said, I don't know, he always says they, 
Who's the they who says Michael Flynn didn't lie? You know, the they in this case, I think, is maybe the deep state they, this fictitious cabal that Trump sees at every juncture that gets in his way. But the, the reality is this. You reach a point when you listen to him where you realize that when prosecutors investigate him, they're corrupt and evil. When the FBI finds evidence against him, there's something wrong with the FBI. When judges rule against yep. him, they must be corrupt. And so we know that they is really a fiction in Donald Trump's mind. And in reality, as that evidence mounts from a variety of sources, it is far more likely that the reality is simply that Donald Trump has violated the criminal laws of the United States and it's catching up with him. Joyce Vance, I never want to, to, to contravene anything you're saying, but Harry Lippman, Donald Trump says that what Joyce says is not true. He tweeted this morning uh, that this was not campaign. Now we're talking about Michael Cohen, right? He says this was not right. campaign finance. This is the payment that Michael Cohen made uh, to Stormy Daniels and the one that he made to American media to pay Karen McDougal. This was not campaign finance. Cohen was guilty on many charges unrelated to me, but he pled to two campaign charges which were not criminal and guilty even on a civil basis. Those charges were just agreed to by him in order to embarrass the president and get a much reduced prison sentence. Harry Lippman, again, it's just not true what the president has tweeted there. I also wouldn't want to contravene anything Joyce says, but it's only because she's always right. But That's here, right. it's it's pretty straightforward. I, you know, the uh, there's an element almost, as I watched it again, Ali, of pathos to seeing the leader of the free world making up lie after lie and in such short order. Y you know, it's an almost dazzling lie here to say Michael Cohen has just pleaded guilty to something that isn't a crime and a judge I accepted it. You know, it's a it's a complete um, fantasy and only the, the latest in an increasing series of ever weaker uh, excuses and you know this last this has been a blockbuster week everything is coming home more and more to the president and his immediate circle uh, this this uh, the revelations of today I think bring peril even potentially to Melania uh, and just everyone around him now uh, seems to be uh, really implicated and the epicenter of it all of course so both of you are former the United States. U.S. attorneys, former prosecutors. Yeah. You're not you're not strangers to people lying. But what's often very right. interesting to you is real evidence uh, that helps prove that. Uh, Donald yeah. Trump, a, a Trump ally, has told NBC News, and I think this part's interesting, that impeachment or whatever comes to Donald Trump as a consequence for all of this lying and all of the misdeeds may hinge on David Pecker. I'm very interested in this. The head of uh, American Media Incorporated yeah. and, and the, the non-prosecutor, I don't know what the term is, but the agreement that he's come into with the Southern District of New York and Alan Weisselberg, the CFO of the Trump Organization, Joyce, who, you know, when, when there was that recording of Donald Trump and Michael Cohen, Cohen makes reference to Alan Weisselberg and David Pecker, right? These are the four people who are included in whatever transaction took place. Weisselberg wrote the checks. He's known the Trumps forever. He knew Donald Trump's father and wrote the checks for him, too. Between these two guys, there may be stories we don't even know about. So we've talked a time or two about this idea that prosecutors don't just rely on the, the uncorroborated word of one witness. Michael Cohen will never take the witness stand in a future case and testify without any backup. Instead, what prosecutors do will have layer and layer of evidence that confirms and reinforces the strength of their case. And that's what we see now. We've got Weisselberg, the check writer. We've got David Pecker at AMI. There's some indication that the chief operating officer at AMI is also cooperating. And each of these people will have given prosecutors evidence, and prosecutors will have painstakingly corroborated it, either with documents or perhaps, um, you know, we have this titillating detail that there may be more audio tapes from Michael Cohen, but it will all be a very uh, solidly built building rather than something that would crumble. And, and that's the strength that we see emerging now in these cases that the Southern District of New York has the reputation for putting together so meticulously. I, I guess, Harry, the question I have for you is, what do you do as a prosecutor with a case that is built around the testimony of a whole lot of people who were involved in crooked enterprise? 
You bring it every week. The majority of big cases are built uh, exactly that way, and and the defense always says, "Oh, but he's a, a liar," as the senators have said, and the prosecution always says, as Joyce just pointed out, "Look, there's corroborating evidence." For my money, by the way, the biggest development in a blockbuster week is the revelation that Trump is the third man in the in the room who not only uh, oversees but actually directs and convenes the whole activity sits down to pecker and says what can you do for me it's you know it's all instigated with him but now we'll have at least two corroborators there all of this will have corroboration and the prosecution could say if it ever went to a jury which it probably won't you don't have to take Michael Cohen's word for it alone. Here are the tapes. Here's the evidence. Here's your common sense. There's a wealth of material there that would bring a, that would let a prosecutor bring the case. I mean, I, Joyce, I feel like that's a huge piece of information that Harry just made reference to there. That that there were three people in that room in August of 2015 talking about paying hush money to women so that it wouldn't interfere with the campaign, and Donald Trump was one of them. Other than the fact that that's interesting, the fact that Donald Trump has been remarkably consistent at denying that he knew anything about this, and then when he figured out that everybody else knew that he knew something about this, that it wasn't really a thing, and it wasn't about the campaign, and that it wasn't a campaign finance violation. Again, talk to me about this as a prosecutor. The guy was there when they made the decision to pay the money. If Donald Trump was one of your kids and talked to you like that, you'd send him to his room without dinner, right? This is just lie after lie, and as the truth emerges, he sort of shifts his story to conform, but it's always a new lie. And so what prosecutors now have is the folks who were in the room with him. That matters. That's critically important because for these campaign finance fraud counts, the law is a little bit different. Typically, ignorance of the law is no excuse. But here for campaign finance, you have to actually prove that a putative defendant knew he was violating the law. You don't have to show that he knew he was violating this particular campaign finance law, just that he knew that his conduct was illegal. And so the conversations that were held first person with Donald Trump in that room could be really important in this area. And if I can just go back and confirm what Harry was saying about the way prosecutors build cases, as you pointed out, where the defense comes forward and says, you know, all of these witnesses are liars. Well, that's prosecutors stock and trade. Mm -hmm. And the argument that you make as a prosecutor and juries understand this is that the prosecutors didn't pick the witnesses. The defendant picked the witnesses. It's it's Donald Trump in this case who hired these people, who uh -huh. worked with these people, and who conspired with them. This is an important point. America, thanks to both of you for your help in helping us analyze these things. Joyce Vance and Harry Littman. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.